people finally finally yeah. get to see Tom. So Tom, yes. kindly introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Tom. Uh, Tom Kamute, uh, owner of Creel Kitchen. And yeah, my friend uh, for a long time. Yeah, uh, we've been sort of missing each other. Missing each other. Like, okay, he's yeah. a very private guy, guys. So <laughs> yeah, to get yeah. him is, it's like finding a damn one. <laughs> no, no, no. But I've been pushing because we really need to get his story. Yes. So there's so many of you guys going to be encouraged. So right now we're at Sugar Crust. Uh, yeah, so the other place we were was Crave's Kitchen. So you are opening chains of stores, uh, chains of um, uh, restaurants around mm. uh, this place now. No, not not chains. Yeah. But those are those are a bit of a gap between mm -hmm. uh, Kikuyu. Yeah. And say anywhere else, say like Karen. Yeah. There's nothing around, so mm -hmm. I felt uh, I wanted to try something else as well. Yeah. So I I ventured into this. Uh, into this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, basically, what is your experience in terms of um, like let's say chef or how did you start to get to this place that we are right now? Um, okay, I started. Okay, I started early. Mm -hmm. um, at the age of say twenty, mm -hmm. um, and still that's late though, because other people start quite early, around fifteen. Being so a you chef. started twenty to do what exactly? Chefing. Chefing to cook. Yeah. So uh, that is what as at home or no no I I just went for experience. Mm -hmm. I went to college, but didn't really go to the college. Mm -hmm. So got my then chef uh, to supervise. So this uh, so was I had a connection with the uh, with the college. Mm -hmm. So whenever I whenever I do the the oh. yeah, so he would supervise it as okay. opposed me to go to the classes, because it, it was a full on kitchen. It was a French kitchen. It was a French kitchen yeah. here in yeah. Kenya in Nairobi. No, not not in Kenya. No. Yeah. yeah, in UK. In UK. Yeah. Wow, so yeah. you started uh, the UPC in UK? Yes, I did, yeah. So um, how, how, how did you go to UK? I just wanted to get that started. Um, actually, it was just to go study. Mm -hmm. and then, uh, that was then after, after... Did you study in Kenya? Yeah, yeah I did. I did. After All your parents were here? Secondary, yeah. So you went and uh, wanted to do study yeah, in, yeah, in yeah, UK? Yeah. Yes, uh, but I wanted to go do electric. Elect I wanted to be an electrician. Ah. And I joined a college for that. And three months I, qu I quit. Why? <laughs> I was just so it, I didn't have the passion for it. As in, it felt like a drag, you know, like I was dragging myself to class. Mm. And um, the moment I got my first job, it was uh, washing. I used to wash dishes in that same kitchen. Mm. Um, and this, what, which hotel is it, this? It was, uh, it was a Hilton, mm -hmm. uh, the Windows Kitchen. It was a full French restaurant. Everyone there was French, everything was French. So I, I, I needed, in London. Yeah, I needed a job to support me for your studies. Yes, my studies and living. Mm -hmm. So I'm there washing dishes, and I know uh, daytime I'm going classes for electrician. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and and usiku na washa. I okay. Then I felt uh, one day nika nikanza nika. I started getting interest in the way it's like an art. The setup, the French people are very different. They, they, very they, detailed. Yes, very detailed, very immaculate, mm -hmm. very passionate about what they do. And every time I'm washing these dishes, when they call in orders, I just felt this is really, really what I should be doing. Not, <laughs> not flicking around with wires and screwdrivers. So, yeah, and the guy just sort of, I, I spoke to the chef. So, after how long did you stop studying electric? Three months. Three months. Yeah. And you and, and all went the money that paid went down the drain. There was no refund. Oh my. Yeah. Oh so my. it was okay. So you started focusing more. Yeah. Just apart from dishes, now started yes. wanting. So I, I spoke to this guy, uh, Jack Lawrence. Mm -hmm. He was a very hardcore, tired, tough guy. Mm -hmm. And I just said to him, "Look, I'm really interested in cooking." And okay, the first the first response was he told me, "Yeah, stick to what you do, washing." He was the manager. Or who? No, the head chef. Oh, uh, so he didn't really think that I had it in me, so he just said, ah, no, keep washing, I'll ah. think about it. Two, three months went on, and then I went again and asked him, and then he said, uh, right, I'll think about it again. Then he called me and said to me, right, okay, uh, I'm going to give you some jobs, pole pole, jikoni, yeah. still on the cleaning, washing, fridges, 
arranging things, clean filming things, uh, laboring, evil, evil, walking wow. fridge. And uh, sometimes I would walk in and I'll find, say, we had these long tables, like from there, Makauku, mm. America Hub Zote Apple. Out of nowhere, he tells me, so you want to be a chef? Tell me what hubs are. And, ah. and I'm like, uh, okay, I wasn't ready for this. He goes, well, when you're ready, you're going to start work then. So I was... I'll you got you started yeah. developing interest in it? Yeah, so I started realizing that this is the trend. He wanted, he's sort of like testing. Mm. French people are very particular about who handles their food. And they have a way, they grow up with it. It's not like us. This is things... What they cook is what they usually cook at home. Like if you go to oh. the rural areas of uh, the say, villages, yeah, they make bread every time. You know, this is normal for them. This is not like it's normal. It's not something yeah. new. It's not something new. Their sauces are very, very unique, um, and the way they do things. Um, this has to go fast, or mm. this has to be done to a certain point. Degrees. Yes, 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 yes. So it started on like that. And now I just started getting the interest because I knew now every time I came there was something. So I would come in the next day and he told me to turn potatoes. So turn potatoes is like we'd use a small uh, baby potatoes yeah. and then you need to turn it into eight sides or seven sides and they have to be perfect sides. So I have angonia and angonia of courgettes what? and angonia of carrots. And I'm like, it's 8 o'clock in the <laughs> evening, <laughs> and these guys are closing at 11, and he's like, uh, well, um, Kimaliza, out and at home. <laughs> like, what? This, this a, yeah, that's the truth. So and you had to peel, is, is it peeling? Or yeah, peeling? I could show you, but um, it's quite, it, it, the potato, you need to sort of turn, it's called a turn ah, potato, because it has a turn. Mm. It's carved in that way, and it has eight sides. And that, with the courgettes, carrots, Wow. Three hours before going. Yeah. So they used this for sorted. So it was a fine dining restaurant. So there was a lot of famous people used to come there. Um, a lot of famous people. Uh, I've cooked for Luther Vandross before he died. Ooh, you yeah. cooked for Luther Vandross? Yes, we even met. I mean, they used to come and walk into the restaurant. This is what? what yeah, like uh, Geodesy had the whole floor, the whole top floor, so no one could go there. Mary J has been there. I mean, this is a big time place, David Beckham. Oh, this, you said this it was is, a Hilton? Yeah, Hilton on Park Lane. Wow. Park Lane, it's, it's near a park, uh, near Knights Bridge. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was pretty much, uh, those days the Hilton was, was... Like it was the Hilton? It was the Hilton, yeah. yeah. I don't know now, but yeah. that day walking to the Hilton, it felt like you were walking to a very prestigious place. Wow. Yeah, it was, uh, so going up all the way to the top floor, windows, it was called windows because it was all windows. You had a 360 oh, degrees. Of, oh. Yeah, restaurant plus the kitchen had a 360 degrees. So you could really see anywhere all around. Wow. Yeah, so it was very famous for it. Candlelight dinners, uh, very, very exclusive food. Um, a bit expensive, but again, it's a Hilton. Fine dining. But there. very, very, very nice food. Very, very nice. So that, that was my first experience so, as a chef, really, to be honest. And how, how did he get to a point and you started, yeah, you know, just, so, he accepted you to, you know, well, train? Well, okay, I'm going to be honest. I, like, there's another guy who started working there, a chef, a sous chef, uh, next to him. Yeah. So you have the head chef, and you go by grades. So you go head chef, then you have a sous chef, junior yeah. sous chef, um, chef de party, demi chef. Uh, commie chef, commie, wow. well, then you have a commie, commie, commie. I didn't yeah. even know we have yeah, so many. Great, yeah. <laughs> so when the head chef is not there, the sous chef is pretty much in charge. And this guy was a black guy. Everyone else was French there. Yeah? And those days, you were talking about... So this was how old? This, this was, was like which 19, year? 90s, 90s. Oh, 90s? 90s, yeah. Wow. Still racism was massive. So, so strong. Yeah, it was... It was Okay, this guy came from France, a black guy. So one day when the chef was not there, he said to me, I said to him, look, I really want to get into the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I can't just be cleaning ovens and... Because they will leave Let's, the kitchen. Ah. And once they're done with the last check, leave everything there, go. Now I have, you to, have come, to come and clean. And we're talking about this kitchen was set up like this, but massive from here to there. Meat, fish, and the other side is another guy there with a garnish for meat and sauces for meat, fish, his garnishes, 
So the guy, so if you have a salmon on mm -hmm. order, so he'll call out the order and say one salmon order, he'll cook the salmon, he'll cook the garnish, the bait, and the sauce uh, for it. Yeah, so that's how it was. And you have another section for cold starters, yeah. and another section for hot starters, and now the pastry. Wow. Yeah, and everyone had their own fridge. So you can imagine, this is like we're talking about 15 chefs in the kitchen. So when they're done with the last order, they go. And I'm left there now, starting the stores. And these stores are massive. So I have to scrub everything. Everything had to be scrubbed down. The hygiene was top, top. Because of the yeah. people come there. And because of inspections as well, uh, every fridge, I had to tour everything from the fridges. Clean, yeah, clean film, change containers, redish everything in, dated. Uh, then go to the walk-in fridge, which was about this whole size. Open what? the fridge, and there's a time I locked myself in there <laughs> for like four hours. What? <laughs> yeah, um, there was something wrong with the door. So once you get in, when you oh, go in, you, lock the door yourself in. you can't leave the door because of the temperature. So it's kafunga, but there's a thing you push so that the door opens. It jammed. So after cleaning and the fridge, it's a massive fridge. We're doing orders for these about five So you locked yourself for four yeah, hours? Yes, for four hours. How did you save yourself? I kept knocking on the door. For them days, mobile phones, like you couldn't oh, get network in there. Oh. Yeah. So, wow. but like, you're okay chances are there was a guy, one of the cleaners, Akafungua. And, and you're okay. Yeah, yeah, I came out. Thank God it was, it was a fridge. In, it was in a fridge, freezer. It, it was thank God it was a fridge. But it was massive. So every layer is divided into say dairy products so cheese cream milk evo evo uh cooked meats all in one section raw meat in one section fish mm. soups sauces and then you come to veg section as well as in it was all divided into categories you couldn't mix up everything everything had to come out the trail change containers yeah. and put it back on there yeah, and label it here yeah. So this, as I understood later on, was, uh, was a way for me to get into the kitchen because in a way I couldn't really get into the kitchen if I didn't know what products they use. So I really needed to label everything. By me labeling, that means I... You, you, you're learning. When I go do the herbs there, so I know these are chives, and I label chives, uh, coriander, um, lots of the lettuce, whatever. Yeah, I would have to label everything for me to be able to leave that place. And I couldn't live without supervision as well. So you clear somebody come supervise what yes, you've done? Yes, it has um, to be. It was a 24 hours, of course, it's a, it's a hotel. Yeah, yeah. So there's other restaurants down there, like about, there was about five, six restaurants. So, and there was always a, a night supervisor. So like, you, like salads, you had about 10 types of salads. Not just what we have, lettuce. <laughs> you have lettuce, you have uh, Roman lettuce. You had Dardisha, Laurel Rose, Caliendi, Vitka Marizo, Oakley, like Roquette, all those things have to be labeled, sourced out, and you also have new products as well that are there. Mm -hmm. It also be, it, it wasn't just for me to clean. But me, I looked at it then as a dirty job, because of course, I know no one cleaning it, you know? You were the this only person. for a good, almost a year. For a year doing yeah. the dishes, cleaning, yeah. arranging yeah. the fridges. So I'll come in and clean a little bit. Then when another guy comes in, then I'll leave that and start doing the clean kitchen cleaning. Mm. And so this now, when I'm doing all this, I'm learning, okay, there's salmon, there's halibut, there's sea bass, there's uh, prawns, there's langoustines. Like now, it started becoming sort of part of me. Uh, and if I didn't do that, when use. they call an order, I would not have known what to. So if they call a langoustine order, I would have known what is langoustine. But since I've, you know, it, sourced it's, them out. It's, yeah, it got into your head. Yeah. Not your so this was his idea because as well he knew I didn't have a background of cooking. I was mm. just, and I was too late. Most of them start around the age of 15, 14, 15. And you're already 20. Yeah. yeah, when I got in the kitchen. And for us, 20 I, is good. Yeah, good. no, 20 is late. Man. Yeah, wow. Dude, I was in the kitchen. Uh, when you go me really in the section, I go into the veg section for meat. Sometimes I'm thrown to the fish section, and you're cooking things to order. Nothing is cooked to order, as in pre-cooked. Yeah, sorry. It's, it's not, so if you get um, sorted potatoes, the tanned potatoes, they are raw. Throw them in the pan mm -hmm. and make sure the eva kabla 
your dishes, the meat is the ready. The meat is ready. Yeah, everything as well, the meat, the fish, to order. So you can imagine. So I'm, I've got a section, and everyone, the section is a supervisor. And I've got a, like a 17 year old boy <laughs> supervising me. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> when did you see this? And he can cook really good. Really good. I mean, very impressive. I think our 844 system sometimes yeah. straight. Yeah. You know, it give <coughs> you become jack of all trade. Yes, I think um, I think they start they start early and they encourage as well. There's a lot of encouragement and a lot of um, you can do it. It doesn't mean that um, you're 14 and you want to do, say, for example, you want to be a musician. Yeah. And to, ah, music will not get you anywhere. No, they just if encourage you. Know, that you. is your passion. Yeah, they push just you. encourage you. I think that's the way forward, and I'm trying to do that with my son as well. I'm sorry, I'm going to mention uh -huh. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not trying to control him. I'm trying to let him be. Yeah. Let him be. Yeah. And you're going to push his talent or his skill yeah. or whatever he puts. What I see he's more interested in, I'll mm -hmm. just be interested in it as well. So did you get to a point to become a chef? Yeah, so after that, now I was just at Komi. A Komi is a... A Komi chef is just someone who does anything. You can... Uh -huh. You don't... You don't really particular. You, you can't you're run not a specialist. section. No. You can't mm. run a section. You can be called to do whatever and you just do it. You know? There's different... There's different... There's a, there's a rule, rules in the kitchen. And I think... Um, in Europe, they are... They are very... Um, they're very firm about it. Kitchen is like military, honestly. Yeah. Kitchen is like? Like military. Oh. Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. When, when you're in service in a French kitchen, yeah. everyone's quiet. And when the orders is called, everyone answers it. Just like the way military, you go, where chef? And the whole kitchen answer, and then quiet, silence. It's amazing. Only thing you hear is things cooking, pans, that's it. The chefs are on the you don't, you don't mumble. Mm -hmm. The way I see here, people maybe on the phone, none of it. Phones, leave it in the uh, You leave it at the changing room. You're not going to use it. Dude, when you have 30 covers on a fine dining restaurant, mm -hmm. you're busy. You're talking about you have an appetizer which comes from the cold starter or the hot starter, depending on what it is. It could be a small red mullet with a little sauce or a small soup, or it could be a small salad with maybe cheese or bruschetta or whatever. So they get an appetizer to, you know, to let the taste burn. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is a fine dining. Wow. Then now they ask for their starters. Then they get their starters. It could be soup, whatever. Then now you have the main course. And then you have a pre-dessert. Then you have desserts. Then you have cheese and crackers. Yeah, okay. Petit fours. And then you have your coffees or your wines. And every time you have your starters, you have a different, if you're having wine, different wine. If you're having a meat for your main course, then you have a different wine. That's, it's, so everything is quite, yeah. Detailed. Yeah, quite detailed. Uh, so when you move from, a, say, that was an A Rosette restaurant, then you go to a Michelin star, one star, two star, then three star. So now when you're talking about one star, you've been recognized by by the Michelin that you're doing something, maybe your food is good, but you're lacking a few things that you need to adjust, maybe the service or the setup. And when you have two, you, you're not quite there, but three means everything's perfect, you know. Mm -hmm. So they are very strict. But I find I find there's a lot of wastage. When I work there, mm -hmm. um, I have worked for a Michelin star restaurant as well. Uh, very, very good, three Michelin star. My concern was the waste. I know there's fine dining popping up everywhere, like in Kenya. I've seen a few places. Yeah. I don't know if there's also, but there was a lot of waste, you know. Because like, you can't. Yeah, you, you, for example, like, um, what can I give you as an example? Um, so if you feel at a fish, uh, some parts you cut off and throw. I mean, uh, maybe because I'm from Kenya. <laughs> Kenya, so that. Actually... Like, this is, this is, this is meat. <laughs> yes. And like, um, she do not sell that fish tonight. Going to waste it. it goes to the bin. So if you cook rice today, for the day, for the day and the night, mm -hmm. to you know it's in the fridge. But Johnny, you chuck it in a Michelin star. Everything's done from scratch. The next day you come in and and make fresh. Sometimes I used to throw away food. I used to be so mad and pissed off. Like gosh, it's a lot of food we're throwing. We're throwing pasta. We're throwing all the veg we did yesterday. All the warus. 
o de leeks o de carrots. Oh, so that's why the whole yeah. bean is full of That's food. why such such uh, you know dining places are usually expensive to yes, cover up for the cost. Yeah. Right? Cover off the cost and also it's not everyone that can afford that, but really it's a, the experience I'll say it's one it's of a, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So you, you everything is perfect. So everything. you worked there for like how long? Uh the Hilton I had to do I had to do up to three years for me to I had a deal with the the Hilton. Mm-hmm. Took me to college, although I never really went to college. Uh, I'd only go there once a week, the college. And then they'll sort of uh, take Approve. me up and exams I'll go and do them. And after that I really uh, had to do two years for them. And then they gave me my certificate, yeah. So that was the deal. So three years? Yeah, it was worth it. So it after three years you came back home or you worked? No, no, no. I, I went on to other places. Um, uh, yeah, when the next place I went was a Michelin star. It was called Pure Lease. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pure Lease was a very fine dining. Now times 10, what I've just come from. So I thought... He thought was like... Windows. I thought Windows was it. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I know I've seen this... This kind of uh, cooking, the way they do their fish or their meat, very, very different. I've never, actually, I've never experienced anything like that. Went into a Michelin star, oh my God, notch, 10 notch up. Very, very tight. Very, very tight. Wow. To a point where I would tear down. Um, there's a lot of bullying in the kitchen. Really? Uh, yes. It's not bullying, it's the culture, the, the, the catering industry. Um, so there was a lot of them days again. It was the racism. Yeah, stuff. not even just about racism. It was just them days. Um, the way. Oh, the culture was in yes, school. Yes, it, it was, was just bullying. also a time when fine dining and all these things were coming up. It wasn't like that before. There were new chefs like Ramsey. Um, there was uh, Ivy as well. Was also a place that was really coming up, you know. And food had just become something. People stopped. People now wanted to dine out. No many mm-hmm. people were doing that before. Yeah. So now the explosion of this, and now competition, and everyone wants a recognition, you know. So and as I was telling you, the guy, the the guy that came from France, the black guy, the sous chef. Yeah. He said to me, he pulled me into the, the walking fridge and shut the door and said to me, dude, if you're going to go on like this, you know, then I'm going to let you in here. So I said, but I'm, I'm working my ass off. I'm here. I'm leaving this place at three. I have to go in the shule. Then I was still doing the, the course for electrician. And he's like, dude, that's not enough. I said to him, you see me? Uh, do you see I run around? To see if another is late, I'm the one she I said, yeah. And he goes, um, well, I'll tell you something. You gotta work twice as hard than that dude there for you to even actually get a little foot in there. And he was right, dude. You he had was to work very right. twice. When I went to Liz, the first thing that guy said to me, you're the first thing and the last one in the kitchen. Don't ever be late. <laughs> I was like, what? What time is in? Six is in. I was six. Like, okay, six is in. What time is out? Well, we shut down. Last order is 10.30. So 11, we leave. And you leave. I was still a commie, so I'll cook the whole day with them, and then I'll clean the whole kitchen afterwards, when everyone's gone. And I, I, need, to, I need to be in there by 6 tomorrow to receive deliveries, know them the right places, and set up the places for everyone. So they walk in. Yeah. That, that's basically... The, okay, the culture then, it was very... Chef was very... It was very intense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything was just... Everything was just, it's like now when you see, say, for example, someone is blowing up. Everything is, it's just, the pressure is there, man. The pressure is there. When you have, like, say, top people coming to dine in a place like that, then, yeah, the pressure is on. The pressure is too much. And then they also had a school as well, which was also Mm. part of, um, you know, it it was, it was, uh, but I, when looking back, worth it. Worth it. Looking back then, yeah. I'll, I'll get home like about say two thirty TV I'm like, oh, I'm really tired. Am I allowed to sleep? I'm so tired. I'm like, before I even take a shot, it's three thirty. In tomorrow's I'm cut. So I need to wake up before six. I need to be there at six, and that's six days. Sometimes a week, five days. 
Yeah. And you go to other places, like if you did work for, say, a top chef, then the chef that was really now coming up then was like Ramsey. Dude, you're leaving, you finish service at 11, you go to pack your thing, goes, what are you doing? Prep tomorrow. You live in the kitchen at two. <laughs> like, what? And you're in at five to start. But, you know, everything is done fresh, fresh. So, but yeah, um, you get the experience. Um, sometimes you just forget everything, put your head down and get on with it. And nothing is easy. Um, I'm not going to say that everything is supposed to be hard. Yeah, but, but some, some things, easy. yeah, there's a difference between a skill and just a job, you know. Skills take time to, to build. To build, yeah. You, you, a skill is more worth it. Mm. Yeah. A skill, you, you have it for life. Yeah. Wow. So you, yeah. so at what point did you come to Kenya? Um, so. I left there, I think, I think maybe, I think I've been here for almost, what, almost 10 years. Now. After 10 years in the yeah, UK? Yeah. Yeah. So at that time, at the end of 10 years, you, yeah. you were, at that time, I'm sure you were very big. Uh, yeah, well, I, okay, then I also ventured into something. I left now, but I moved into different restaurants. Okay. And uh, I got to run a restaurant uh, before, I, before I left. Uh, it was called the Rose and Crown. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I went there as a sous chef, and the head chef was also a French. Okay, he was trying to do, it was a pub. Then also pubs were the main thing. So pubs and, and, and food were the new thing now, where you could go dine in a pub, have a beer, mm -hmm. and still also have really nice food, but local food, you know, not very fine dining, because the fine dining became too much, too expensive. The experience could only be, be experienced by now, very wealthy, wealthy people. people. But now certain chefs started branching out and started going to, say, a pub or a cafe and do nice food, uh, not expensive, uh but also nice that's the edge they had on it you know so i, I went to this place the rose and crown um there was a french chef head chef there and he after i think a month or so he left so i took over uh, started cooking as a head chef and yeah that's my first experience of running a place uh, oh. as now a business or, person or, no, no no it was not my place so someone's place but the but idea I was running of running the, yeah the kitchen yeah so had to do now everything from say now ordering, organizing menu, blah 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 blah. blah, blah. Mm. So that was really my first experience of um, um, a head chef, yeah, I would say. And I got a write up for it in the evening standard, which I was oh, ah. so blown away by. It. <laughs> like I couldn't believe as a black guy, I was really in the evening standard of uh, London this way. Yes. That was quite something, yeah, wow. because. Very rarely, you know. You'd um, get featured a black yeah, person. Uh, you know, even now, it's not as... Racing is not gone. I, I, I know it's people don't experience ladies. it as a lot here. Here, maybe you might experience it as a tribalism. Mm -hmm. But when you do experience racism, it comes as a shock. I, it's, the, it's the most... I don't know how to explain that feeling. The feeling of... Uh, you're not worth it, or you don't think how you think a bay. It's a really like you go in a bus and sit on a seat, and someone would leave that seat and go sit there because they don't. And you thought they were gonna come out, but actually no, they go sit there. Or someone will get up, spit on the floor, and go sit there, or stand, or just stand away from you. I've been, I've been, I've been. I went to Liverpool one time, and yeah. I did work in Liverpool as well. But Liverpool, there's a, there's a, there's a major thing. Anyway, I don't want to go into detail in it. But anyway, I go throw you know, eggs, rotten eggs. Somebody throw through Yeah, through. and they, talk, they said, uh, what they said? They said, okay, they used the N-word and said, go back to your country. And I tell you what, there's some times I would get there, and I would not leave my house. As in, I would just stay in the house and go like, like, like they you feel they, they make you with feel all like the hardship you're, you're that you're less a human being. Yeah, I mean, I, I okay, them days you hardly get a job in an office. You ha you only get maybe jobs in like clean toilets, kitchen, washer. You've had a long day, and then you get something like that. You can imagine you have no families around. Like here, you have your, your aunties, family. whatever. Uh, so when you're really in a kitchen, like in a Michelin star, 
yeah. and your feature. So Michelin design. star, what do you mean by that? Michelin star is a, it is, it's just a class, the, the standard. Okay, yeah. the first, um, second. Yes, first, first second, star. third. Third means you got a worldwide recognition. Okay. Uh, everything is, um, you know, you come in there from service to ambience to the food is perfect. Wow. Yeah. So you came back to Kenya? Yeah, I came back to Kenya. Was it because you got tired of no. the treatment? Actually, uh, no, 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 mm. that's not it. Uh, I actually wow. used would come back every now and then and I just used to love being here. When I used to be you here, I used to find, homely. felt home, felt peace. And I felt there was a lot you could do and there was a massive gap in um, the catering industry. A massive, even now. This is huge. Huge. It's probably that much exploited. This a drop in that the ocean. <laughs> there, the catering industry is massive. I know Corona came and changed a few things, but still. This is a huge yeah, gap. And, and with the way the place is going, new roads, mm -hmm. it just brings the out more opportunities, yeah. There's so much to do in catering right now that you really can't hack it. Even Java, yeah. right now, yeah, it's true. still... It's still not yet. Still, yeah. So they, they can do a lot. And, you know, if you can see, mostly they are around town. Mm -hmm. But if they start coming back this way, there's still There's a lot it. of potential. Yeah. Do you know sometimes yeah. how you look for that kakofi and you have yeah. to go the other side? Yeah. And you're like, okay. There's a lot of potential. A lot. A lot of opportunities and a lot of young people that want to to get into the trade to get involved uh so there's there's still, there's a, lot still a lot yeah there's still a lot too. what was your turning point to come and back to kenya like what was this point that you felt like i need to come back home i think um i think when everything just started changing the roads mm -hmm. the roads and um the infrastructure, infrastructure, like infrastructure the economy opening up that made things much easier much could you imagine you going them days yeah from here to Thika? <laughs> it was crazy it was what? crazy here to kisumu oh the roads were super bad yeah so that made things easier because like now if you're like hit waka mm -hmm. one time 10 15 minutes you're there and it's just yeah, a different it's experience. true guys the economy is yeah. really open up. it just makes things easier supply is much easier getting hold of products and people the people okay. are also getting the cash in yes. the economy, like yeah. the middle class yeah. is growing. Yeah. yeah. I think I've always been low key. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's not because of it, it's just the way I am. And I, I, I enjoy being this environment. Kenya is just such a nice place for, you can just be who you want to be without mm. too much. If you look for trouble, you get it. But you know, yeah. I've never encountered any trouble. Or oh, wow. what I used to hear, because what I used to hear mostly is, uh, you know, there's nothing good, yeah, he's fighting. Country. When you get here, oh, your buddy, that guy we were just talking about. Yeah, what am I? He says the what same thing. He watches you. Yes. <laughs> say, and you know, that's the reason why I like watching, because yeah. what he says is true. I've never, I've, I watch a lot of his uh, programs, and he doesn't lie, it's true. When you're really outside, you get portrayed. African countries get portrayed as um, yeah, we live in the bad, bush. not good, like nothing going on. There's mm -hmm. war, blah blah blah. Like how he, he went to Somali. I watched his program. Yeah, Somali. Somali. And I was quite surprised. Like I really want to see guys <laughs> walking around <laughs> with guns, fighting. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, I was even though there's a Kenyan there. Mm -hmm. I think there's a Kenyan there farming. Is it in yeah. Somalia or somewhere? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I also saw this lady in Nigeria. She, she also used to be in yeah. UK and she was yeah. doing furniture. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, the furniture. And she said the same thing about it. She's not, she's not there permanently. Yeah. And I like what she's doing. I think, yeah. It's, it's time for it's a us good to idea our story. For, yes, it is. Like if you come here and pass on the knowledge to other people, the, the, the young guys here are willing to learn. They so are you, very you, you, he, so you currently run Craig's Kitchen, yeah, and uh, Sugar Craft. So yes, this is yeah. your new establishment, new baby, new baby. Yes. So it means that uh, the business has been good for you. It has been good. Yeah. Um, and I want to say thank you to everyone that yeah. has really, really supported me. Yeah. Uh, but I also want to mention that um, after Corona, things have been very, very a bit tough. Yeah, a bit tough. Uh, it, it's just. Okay, the catering industry got affected a lot. So there was a lot of uh, 
first it was first closure mm -hmm. and it was also then um, we couldn't open unless we had also to my pay more. Oh yeah. So yeah. those are then there was no sitting on it take away. Yeah, that was now, true. I do understand a lot of people that close because when you have a a, a big place or let's just say a catering industry, there is a lot of uh, expenses. And yeah, when you're doing start doing takeaway only and you're just the sales are not even what you used to do then, it changes the thing. And then that's not just one month, you have a few months. So then you start having a backlog. And yeah, um, I've also been feeling that a lot. Mm. Uh, so it's not been, I'm not gonna crave in here and say um, uh, that, you know, everything is, it's nice sometimes to be uh -huh. honest because someone out there might be watching this yeah. and maybe might just get the inspiration from here. I have been trying to, to hold on to crave Kabisa because it has been a deep bit tough yeah. uh, because of uh, the backlog. Uh, but I think if they're not giving up is the best thing. You know, just if you really still have uh, the passion, you just keep pushing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's what we do. That's what we are. I mean, this this here was just something I wanted to try out, and I've with the Corona Likuja, I just now everything changed. You know? so the Even the business has changed in restaurants and cafes. Uh, I, and I think a lot of people believe in uh, what I'm saying. People, the way of coming out and dining has changed. I think also that has also to do with the way schools are. The school has also... So what ha has changed in what way? Yeah. People don't dine the way they used to dine or um, go out the way they still go out. Um, that's true. Because along the time of Corona, people people learned a few things. <laughs> Cooking for them? Or yeah. <laughs> A lot of things change. Some people are still now back to work. Some people are still working yeah, from home. Yeah, that, that has affected some so people, many. Yeah. Some, some organizations yeah. have realized they don't need people to work. Yeah, that made a lot of uh, places realize office. a lot of things. And uh, a lot of people who used to work also realized a lot of things. Yeah, There's a lot of people who ventured now on their own thing online. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of people now who used to die now a lot and realize, oh, maybe... Things are different, yeah. um, and prices have gone up as well. Uh, so a lot has changed. People, the way people used to come and just say, can I have this and this? That has changed. That person that used to come five days a week, now probably comes twice a week, the way I see it here. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, that's the way I see it anyway. Um, the world, you have to adapt. Yes, you to just have up. to adapt, yeah. yeah. I think that's the, the way, but still, I still won't disagree. There's still a lot of potential. The regardless of corona because i the first time i came to craves kitchen house, yes, it was buzzing. i was like it was buzzing. i was yeah. surprised number one <coughs> so, i never thought we had such a beautiful hotel in kikuyu yes it, so you come there yeah. like because kikuyu is actually a very small town yes and uh the test your test act is actually karen yeah style. <laughs> what is this test you have no like, actually it, actually kikuyu was a, i wanted to actually i'd gone to karen mm -hmm. to there was like a restaurant there that I was interested in. But then Kikui is where it, I grew up around there. I grew up from Kanjero. I'm from Kanjero. Uh -huh. So Kiku, look a place called Nakuja. Oh. It was normal. So I figured out, because I had spent quite some time looking for a premises. So I thought, okay, you know what? Yeah, let me just, let me patch here. Again, there's a, there's a lot of people who I knew. And I thought, well, you know, why not? And I, when I thought about it, I thought, okay, I knew it was going to be different, uh, the, the food, mm -hmm. because obviously of their experience. Uh, but I also knew that um, I, I had a feeling that it would be good to start from a local place. Uh, where, else, where else better to start than your local? Your local area. Yes. So, and I think it worked out okay. And, uh, when you're outside, you can't tell was inside Crave. Yes. That was also another... The contrast is here. Yeah. You'll be outside and be like, Crave to walk in. It's a different. totally different area. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Wow. So, um, thank you. And uh, we just wish, you know, you continue with this. Yes. And uh, do you ever regret, like, um, you know, coming back home? Never. You've never? Never. You don't feel like I need to go back to... Not England. even one day have I ever thought of. <laughs> ever. Actually, never. Yeah. Um, there's still a lot of things that I haven't yet done that yeah. I wanted to do when I, 
I'll quickly mention because maybe I know. Are we wrapping up now? No, no, you, you can just mention. Um, yeah. When I came back, the idea there's one or two things that I have in Okomish. I'll mention one of them because it's something still that bugs me. And that was one of the actual interests of me coming back a lot. So I wanted to open the cafe. And then when the place started running and was up and running okay, yeah. I wanted to open a... I wanted to do something for the homeless, oh. which is something I've never got to do. Uh, what I, the idea was, it wasn't to make money on it. What the idea was, because then I used to find a lot of people, even in Kikuba, now they're none there. I don't know where they went to. The street kids. Yeah. They used to be around, there's a building that used to be around Mogumo Tree there, uh, near Mogumo's building. Oh, yeah, I know that's nice. And every time I used to go there to do shopping, I used to find them there a lot, Johnny. So, I mean, for me, the idea was to build this place where, not to house them, but if you feel how kupata kitia kukula, and you can come there and eat something because uh, there will be food mm. at this time and this time and this time. Then how to la lunch? So and actually talking about it is making me feel you it's need to actualize. Yes, I really got caught up. Okay, crave blew up and it, it, it goes. It got a hold of your time. Yeah, and also didn't get to do. I wanted to also travel a lot so that I'm able to have a bit of a, I, I do, I think when you travel, you get a lot of experience mm. in what you mm. in the industry as well. But my main thing was that, and I even had talked this to my sister about it. Now, it's very funny. I, 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 I started talking to her, there's a lady I started talking to about this, but then we never got to go to that extent, yeah. But I'm, I'm still going it's to It's never do. too late. It's, it's never, never too, too late. late. Yeah. So the idea was to have a place where I could uh, just cater for it, fund it that way. But someone out there feels that like Leo, which is got tight sana, seen a sapa, you just go there. And, yeah, and then at least you have something for the night. Yeah. So if someone maybe out there really as well has an idea like that, or you can, yeah, you can, you just, can um, just reach. maybe reach out to, to yeah. us. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be a good idea. I think I'll be yeah, in peace if I get you to can do that. Yeah. You can partner yeah. with that yeah. and yeah. at least, yeah, you just yes. ensure somebody gets to yes. it. I'm, yes. sure, yes. I'm sure we have, yes. you know, some yes. awesome, awesome subscribers yeah. and fans. Yeah. I think charity will be a, is a good idea. Yeah. 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 In Kenya, why not? Why not? So, why not? so yeah. we really appreciate your time. Same appreciation. And uh, yeah, for encouraging, I hope it's a great encouragement to them. Yes. Yes. For those of you who, you know, you're still ish ish about coming back home. So. Yes. They've come back home and they're doing very well. Yes. So, guys, from us, we say goodbye and have a good time. Oh, yeah. How can they get, in case they need to reach out to Craves Kitchen, yes. food, for inquiries, for, you know, for bookings? Okay, I'll, I'll put the details. You can never Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll give you the website okay. or the Instagram. Okay, uh, or you put it, I'll put it on the description box, yes, all yeah, the yeah. details. Yeah. So, you check on the description box. One of the best places to eat. Yes. Do you often, like, I always, when I come to Craze or Sugar Crust, I always feel like it's like a fine dining. It's a mix. It's a mix. Um, although I'm trying to, to Sugar and Crust, I want to do something very, um, very not fine. But it's not actually fine. It's a, it's a, it's a what do you call it? It's a fusion. Mm. So uh, the edge is you get more for what you, you thought you are going to get. I, th I think that's what mm. I go by. So as opposed to just getting your uh, just chicken, maybe you call it seasoned and it yeah. has... The it is a, and the presentation is The presentation is yeah. Guys, so, I, I urge you to come um, to uh, Krebs yeah. Kitchen, yes. Kikuyu. Man, you guys will be amazed with the place, Thank with the location. Amazing. Yes. Can I just shout out to yeah. some... I want to say thanks to the chefs that I've worked with in Kenya. Uh, been really good, but I also want to say harness your craft, Kabisa, because every day there's someone else who's trying to be better than you. So you've got to make sure that you push your, mm -hmm. yourself to the limit, and there's a lot you can do if you really, really push yourself. You know, um, yeah, um, and now, uh, and yeah, the same thing with your kids. Now that I have a kid, I'm gonna mention. <laughs> yeah, please mention. <laughs> I think if you have kids, um, give them inspiration. Uh, 
and being there for them in real time. When I say in real time, it means the moment. That moment, be there that moment. Not that moment you're there, but your mind is not there. Be there. And proper encourage them. Because really, they learn quickly. And when you show interest, they grow that way. Wow. I think that's all I want to say. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it as well. Asante. Asante. See you guys. Thank you.